afford to give it. But as there are several hundred children attending our schools, the aggregate might be of some value. Carolyn Mead Hansen. And that is where it started, and so the kids did bring. And if you watch the parade nowadays, you'll see that the Ladies' Relief Society members, many, will be carrying a stick of wood and a potato as tradition. Nowadays, of course, it's just non-perishable food items. Could you tell us a bit about the parade itself? Uh, who participates? Um, I'm not usually, I'm usually always in the uh, auditorium packing boxes and things like that. But one of our biggest helpers is the Future Farmers of America who come from Nevada Union High School. They collect a lot of food, bring it down, um, and um, they help us pack boxes. Um, th sometimes They usually are not in, able to get out in the parade because they're busy helping us. Um, the Hennessy School um, goes, and this year it'll be the Grass Valley Charter School. Um, I don't know how things will go this year, but Mount St. Mary's usually joins us. Sometimes um, schools from Nevada City will bus in children to participate in the parade. There are some private charter schools that join us. Um, and um, it may change some this year, I don't know. Does that parade occur on a particular day? Yes, it's the last day of school, which is a minimum day, and the parade is at 10 o'clock, and this year, uh, in uh, tw 2012, it'll be December 21st, um, and the children march from Hennessy School, and we also have the Lyman Gilmore Band, and, and occasionally some of their students will come down, one class or so, um, and uh, the Marine Color Guard starts it out and then um, we have also the pipers which is a tradition um, that has gone on for many years uh, pipers and drummer and it's oh, I wish I could remember the family's name and I am sorry I'm there's so the school kids in the middle of December just before Christmas holiday get out and parade through the streets of Grass Valley and the idea is to make people aware that they're trying to solicit donations for people in our community that need some help. No, actually the kids have already had it explained to them what Donation Day is about. And they've brought the food to the school. The parade itself is just for them. They carry a can or whatever they brought, and they march through. They leave Hennessy. They go up Neal, down Mill, then down Main, um, and then down South Auburn Street and back to Hennessy School. And we like to encourage parents and people on the street because the kids just love it and they're so excited um, to do the parade and of course it's always weather permitting if the weather is bad then they parade through the halls at Hennessy School and a lot of the outside schools wouldn't come it would just be Hennessy School parading uh, but the Pipers still come and and um, do that you know that must be exciting for these little kids to get out like that exactly they just love it can you tell the people if someone were to get involved in the community this would be a good way to do it and how would they go about doing that how would they somebody that wasn't aware get a hold of the ladies aid society well um there isn't specifically, other than our post office box, which is 1132 in Cedar Ridge, California, 95924. And um, we do contact the businesses downtown. They usually put posters in their window, and they collect food. And that's one of the biggest ways that people can help, is either food or cash donations to help pay for this. Because a lot of it, you know, um, our dues have been 25 cents a month ever since the organization started we do have we do have a mandatory uh, five dollar donation day uh, contribution but all the ladies give more than that um, and then um, a lot of the fraternal organizations have been supporting us for years um, and just individuals will come um, and um, this has been going on you know for generations I mean we're now uh, great-grandchildren 
of members are carrying the banner and so forth. Well, you figure it's been going on, yes. you know, since uh, 18, eight, well, 1883 Donation Day, but uh, the Ladies Relief Society uh, since 1873, and I said, I believe I said 1783 originally. Um, so anyway, um, and I do have the name, the Ingersoll family is the one that have been coming and doing the bagpipes and the drums ever since we were able to contact them. And they're now in college, and they weren't at the time, but they even come back and do it from college. It's just amazing. They're wonderful people. You know, I'm going to ask you to slowly go over that address, that Cedar Ridge address once again. If somebody sees this, I think it's an incredible way to get involved with their community. And to me, uh, community is like what you guys are doing. People in the community helping somebody else in the community. So could you give that address slowly? Right. It's the Grass Valley Ladies Relief Society, Post Office Box 1132, Cedar Ridge, California, 95924. And Donation Day has gone through a lot of changes. Uh, I even had pictures, have pictures of Nevada City having their own Donation Day parade. And, um, and um, for a long time, the Nevada City Elks did the Nevada City families. Um, and uh, Don Wasley was extremely instrumental in that, as was Kay and John Ingram, I mean Graham. Um, and... Um, after a period of time, that kind of got phased out. So we also take care of the Nevada City families as well. Daryl, you mentioned that you lived in a town of about 5,000 people when you were a young man, and you knew everybody in town. Now, you've seen some drastic changes in the population of western Nevada County and Grass Valley in particular. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like uh, you're losing your community, or is it gaining strength well I, I don't feel we're losing our community it's a nice place to live and you can't blame anybody for wanting to come here but people leave other places for particular reasons government or whatever but a lot of them want to bring all that back up here and then change this community mm -hmm. so I mean a lot of a lot of the people that are born here uh, would like to just keep things the way they are mm -hmm. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you can't shut the gate behind you when you get here, you know, it's just so we have to. But I think the biggest change, uh, when we were going to school, my class in high school was, there was 200 and some odd kids. Now there's like 2,500 at a graduation class. Uh, <clears throat> and when I mentioned 5,000, that was in the whole county, I think, in the whole community, oh, not just Grass Valley. Because oh, Grass Valley now, I think, only has 11,000. Yeah. So. It's yeah. just a dramatic change, and you know, since the mining was so prevalent when we were younger, that a lot of the miners knew everybody. And when you'd go down, you you know you know families, you know. And uh, I think the big change is I left here in 1977 to go to Wyoming, and the big change came probably in the mid 70s. You know, that's when the boom really took off you know there was so many contractors so much mm -hmm. building and everything going on uh, Alta Sierra was formed in the 60s mm -hmm. and they couldn't hardly sell a lot three thousand dollars a lot you could buy any lot in there when it first started but you know and, and then all of a sudden boom Lake Wildwood and you know Lake of the Pines and that's when the real big boom and then you know the economy has slowed it down otherwise it would probably still be going pretty good I want to thank you two people for doing what you do in our community. That's what community is all about. And I want to thank you for taking some time and sharing your recollections and your memories of days gone by. And this is all brought to you by the Nevada County Historical Society. And I encourage anyone who is interested in the uh, history of Nevada County to check out that organization. They're doing wonderful things in this community. They're keeping the history alive, and that is very important. And we had a wonderful time out here in a little courtyard in Nevada City.
Today is June 28th, 2012, and I thank you.